If you look at any painting, there is a border around it usually, or even the end of a canvas. There's limitations. And I think that's kind of what cinematic is, this term we use. It's about actually removing. It's about creating restrictions for the art we're creating. You think when you do shallow depth of field, you're actually removing information from the back. You can't look into the distance. You're directing the eyes to certain locations. So I actually think it's more so asking yourself, what am I subtracting rather than what I'm adding? Restrictions will actually help you make better art. We can often create a lot of pressure on ourselves because in this new world where everyone has access to an incredible camera, we feel like the stories that we tell need to be incredible, especially if we're consuming stuff online where when we look at things that other people are making, we go, wow, that's amazing. My voice is not worth adding adding to this. People don't need to hear from me. My, my things don't need to get made. And I just entirely disagree with that framework. One thing that I wish I could go back and change about my mindset when I was starting storytelling and cinematography is to avoid deficit thinking as much as possible. You see, I could always point out one or multiple things that was missing that was preventing me from making projects that I actually liked. I wanted budgets for making my passion projects, but never had any. I wanted collaborators to film and work with, but that was really hard to come by. I wanted more gear and equipment so that way I could reach the level of filmmaking that I aspired to. There was a never ending list of reasons that I could always come up that would limit myself. This is why I believe so strongly that the solo filmmaking skill set is a superpower. The ability to show up with just a backpack, to have a camera, and to be a self sufficient filmmaking storytelling machine where you are directing your own story, camera in hand, the camera that you can borrow from a friend or the one that you can afford. You're out there, you're doing it, you're capturing it, and then you go home yourself and you edit it. That end to end process where you just go on set yourself and capture something. That skill set and actively working at getting better at it has been how I've actually finished projects that I personally care about. So today I'm joined by my friend Mark Bohm, who's just an incredible documentary filmmaker. And we're gonna share three tips that I think are really helpful for the solo filmmaker. When we feel like everything's a possibility, it makes it feel like we've gotta make perfect decisions because if we can do anything, the things that we choose to do must be amazing decisions but I found it immensely helpful to narrow in and limit what it is that we're actually choosing from in the first place. So that's where my first tip for you is to choose a physical limit. Because let's say there's a person that you've, you've ran into in life or you've heard about and you go, man, it'd be really sweet to make a video about them. If you just stay in that idea space, it makes it very hard to start to practically think through what is the video or story you're gonna make actually look like. But let's say you start to nail things down and you go, hey, I wanna go film them hike on this mountain, on this day, in this month, and you start to narrow in in a physical, practical sense that starts to ground you. And it's from that place that you can start actually making really quality decisions. And that's gonna allow you to actually start to make creative decisions instead of stressing that you need to make perfect decisions. Hey, how's it going? Do I hide here? You're great. All right. We've all been there at the beginning where the lie that you can tell yourself is, man, if only I had access to more lenses. And let's be clear here. You've already been to the place where you've you've grounded out, you've saved up your money, you've bought a, you own a camera. Yes. You've got a lens, maybe yes. two. Yes. You've got the memory cards, you can record. And you're telling yourself, man, if only I had access to a slider. Mm, yeah. If only I had access to a gimbal. Mm -hmm. And we feel the pressure because the stuff that gets put out there is so cinematic. The tasty B-roll. Oh my gosh, it is. And so we carry that pressure into the things we make, the doc, the story that we're trying to tell, and we go, we need cinematic stuff too. And then we just massively overcomplicate what it takes. So what would you say to the person who's overcomplicating it? Because I think with some constraints, yes, we can actually make things that are more cinematic. If you look at any painting, there is a border around it usually, or even the end of a canvas, there's limitations. And I think that's kind of what cinematic is, this term we use, it's about actually removing, it's about creating restrictions for the art we're creating. Like you even think about like color correction, like when you get your log footage, it's all very blank and, and pale almost, but then we begin crushing the blacks, we begin lifting the highlights, we're actually almost removing information in a way. You think when you add that two, three, five bar crop, you think when you do shallow depth of field, you're actually removing information from the back, you can't look into the distance, you're directing the eyes to certain locations. So I actually think it's more so asking yourself, what am I subtracting rather than what I'm adding? That's what's so fun is restrictions will actually help you make better art.
And so you've been using this this Helios yes, the Prime Helios. lens. Yes. And I just love seeing you use this lens because it's a tighter focal length. Yep. It's not a wide angle. So you're having to select, okay, if if you're the subject matter in the frame, you're having to choose the ingredients that are also going to exist and add to the frame alongside you. And it's even down to small things like rotating a plant. Yep. Yep. Just just changing the way a plant sits in the frame. Oh, hey. I don't let, I'm going to remove the obnoxious way that it was sitting where it was like, it was kind of being a distraction and now it's going to like actually frame in nicely from the side. I'm used to running around handheld with a really wide lens. I love the 24 mil and being up close, which is kind of, you're just shooting everything at that point. But in this case, I've been on a 58 mil lens and I'm having to set down the camera, set the focus because it's not an autofocus lens. And then, so I really have to care about that frame. It's like drawing and painting a frame for each composition of this film. And those restrictions in itself has been creating a new cadence, a new pace of my film. And I'm, I'm loving it. It's a new restriction. I'm having to actually learn how to play within this border that I've created for this film. Okay. Tip number three. Uh, I can remember being so envious of seeing people make things as a team. Yeah. I wanted yeah. that so bad. Yeah. But there's a reality where there's certain steps and processes that need to be in play to work with that quantity of people. <laughs> Funding being a big one. Big one, yes. People got to get paid for their hard work. They do. Logistically, it's actually quite complicated if you're trying to find a document. So like, if we're talking about the world of documentary, mm -hmm. where you want to be able to like go see someone do their thing, logistically, it can be a lot to bring a lot of people into their space as they do their thing. And it can actually, can actually end up creating an environment that's not the best for the kind of story that you're yeah, trying to tell. Absolutely. So if you're the storyteller and that's what you're passionate about, grabbing the camera and holding it in your hand, whew, being the one to show up in person mm -hmm. and being a one man band, that's a superpower. Every person, including you watching this video, you have a worldview. You've experienced life in a way that's different than I have. And that's important for your film. And when you are holding the camera and when you are telling the story, you're gonna create a film that no one else could. So you need to embrace that and know that you being the storyteller will create something unique, will create something new. And there's times when, like Levi alluded to, having a team isn't always conducive to the best filmmaking. Some of my best films came when it was just me and the subject. Had a good shotgun mic, had my favorite lens, had my camera, had good light, and that created the best moments. It was intimate, they shared who they were, and we already had a relationship going. The last sentiment I wanna leave you with, and this is why I'm excited to be doing a video with Mark today, is you don't need to go at this alone. No. And so you can spend a lot of time going deep into the cave and trying to sharpen your skill set but you can also do that in community because there is practical steps that can be can be broken down, that can be shared, that can be encouraged, and also doing that with another group of people. So Mark's got Art of Documentary, his program, they've got modules, they've got a lot of stuff. I know I could, we could do a whole video on what's actually included <laughs> in Art of Documentary, uh, but registration's opening. So how, how many times a year do you actually open it up? Just twice and only one week when we open it. So there's only two weeks a year that you can get in. So this March, we're reopening the doors. And so you don't wanna miss out because you'll have to wait all the way till September. Thanks for watching, links in the description. Check out the videos that we made from this trip earlier in the year in Hawaii. I got, sometime we're gonna have to go do this in an igloo. Do this in an igloo, <laughs> I love that. Let's go get cold somewhere. Yeah, let's, let's go, go suffer. Get, I know, we've been too warm this week. <laughs> all right, okay. see you bro. All right, I'm going back to Canada. <laughs>